Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Satya, uh, not Nadella, Komala. Uh, I am head of product and engineering at Coactive. It was an amazing keynote today, and you're seeing all over uh, in, in this conference AI all over, all around you. What I wanted to show you was how to take use power of AI against your visual content and use this in your workflows in a matter of minutes. So Coactive is a multimodal AI platform. We are a model agnostic platform, which means you could use any of the models on Azure AI Foundry. You could use the open source models that we have on our own platform, or you could bring in a co uh, closed source model to create embeddings off of your data. What Coactive does is, if, if you're a developer and you're trying to build um, semantic search-based applications on your, uh, on your visual content, Coactive is for you. If you're a data scientist and you want to get metadata tags against your visual content, whether it's images or videos, and build uh, models, train, mod uh, train models on top of it, Coactive is the platform for you. Or if you are a product uh, manager or a data analyst who wants to do deep analytics on your visual content, Coactive is a platform for you. So what I'm going to show you right now is a web uh, application. This is our web application, which um, we mostly use for demo purposes. Uh, most of our customers are, use our APIs. Um, and unless you want to use a UI, you can. Uh, what I'm going to show you is an experience of how to bring assets into Coactive. How do you power search applications on top of it? How do you create metadata? And how do you extract that metadata and build use cases on top of it? All within the next 13 minutes. All right, let's start with the injection. So Coactive uh, has a proprietary uh, injection uh, platform that allows you to not just ingest the data, but also power all your applications that you're building on top of Coactive in a matter of seconds. So what we have is I've, I've pre-created some data, and here is one data set that I created with just one image in it. And as we speak, my colleague here is going to uh, start an ingestion job. It's as simple as pointing us to your storage, whether you are on Azure Blob Storage or any other forms of storage where you have uh, your digital assets. You don't need to worry about uh, building data pipelines. You don't need to worry about complex data operations or ML operations. Just point us to your content. We ingest your content. So uh, in this time frame, you would have seen if the internet supports. Uh, <clears throat> I can see images coming in, but internet's slow. We'll, we'll get back to that. I also have um, a pre-ingested content here, a bunch of images and videos that I had uh, downloaded off of, uh, off of web. Right? So what has happened here is that we have generated the embeddings we use one of the open source foundation model here, and we have these embeddings now on Coactive. I can do plain old search, like I want to see if there are any explosions in this data. Yeah, I think I can see a bunch of explosions. Um, I want to find uh, something like an interview with Jim from the office. Right. So all these are basic use cases, basic semantic search use cases. Up until here, other than the ingestion, there is nothing Coactive is doing for you. It's plain old basic semantic search. But enterprise use cases don't end here. So I can quote one of our customers, Loves, which wanted to use Coactive, but they could not use a foundational model because none of the foundational models are trained on what they call Loves Associate. They wanted to identify Loves Associate. And in their definition of Loves Associate, it's somebody who's wearing a Loves vest. So what they did is use a feature on Coactive called Concepts. And I'm gonna, not going to demonstrate this here, but I will show you a similar technology in, in uh, dynamic tags. But we have a booth here. I would encourage you to stop by if you're very interested to see how can you real time fine tune a foundational model and make it uh, work for your use case. But what I'm going to show you right now is a use case. Let's say I'm trying to um, I'm trying to do some metadata tagging, right? So I have a bunch of content. We'll go back to this content here, media content. And I want to uh, tag this content with, uh, with, with a bunch of uh, use cases that I have. Let's say, let's run to this demo. I'm going to select my data set. I'm going to call it demo. And I have, uh, I have a bunch of these tags. I want, to, uh, I, I want to be able to segment my uh, videos based on action sequences, 
um, chase scenes, explosions, fight scenes, romantic moments. It's as simple as saying, create this group for me. So what's happening in the background is that we are taking all of this text that you have and we are assuming that is a text prompt and we are going ahead and creating zero shot classification, right? So for each one of these use cases, I am now going through the entire data set and I'm looking at all of my visual and as well as the, the text uh, or the transcript for a video and I'm now classifying all of these assets uh, uh, per one of these uh, categories that I've given. Now let's just say I want to do a quick check and I say I'm going to be seen quite fight scenes and there are a bunch of fight scenes here. Uh, this looks good. So let me go and look at something that I don't agree with. Semantic landscape. Cinematic landscape, right? So looks like we have a whole bunch of uh, Paramount uh, videos here. And what the model has done is that it is seeing this Paramount logo, which is quite cinematic, right? There is, there is a sunset, uh, there are clouds, there are snow-capped mountains, and it's saying that uh, this is cinematic uh, uh, landscape, which is not what I want. So the, the difference that Coactive brings to the table is that you can give that feedback to the system. So real time, I can go and say, you know what, I disagree with this. A double click is a negative prompt. A single click is a positive prompt. So I, I, I'm going to mark a bunch of them as negative prompts, and I'm, I'm just going to update. So what's, what's happening here is that in real time, we are retraining a classifier, and now we are suddenly able to see all of these images that make sense for cinematic landscape. Now let's say that this is good, but I don't care so much for the snow. I want green. You can also give textual prompts, right? So you can do positive or negative text prompts. And I'm going to say I want greenery. All right. All right. So the model has retrained. And now you are able to see more green Say a cinematic landscape, uh, la landscape uh, pictures here. You can also do audio in this case. So this is, th it is that simple for you to create your own set of classification using Coactive, right? Positive prompts, negative prompts, po positive uh, visual prompts, negative visual prompts, and there you have it. The customers, our customers use this in multiple ways. One of our customers is Fandom. It's a public uh, case study and a white paper you can read which is using Coactive for trust and safety use case. In, in, their, uh, in their use case, what they're trying to do is that they have their own notion of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable uh, to be posted in fandom. So what fandom has done is come to Coactive and trained our classifiers uh, to define what is acceptable or not. So as fandom's customers are uploading images or videos on fandom website, they send that content to Coactive real time we are able to mark, we have to give, we are able to give them an accuracy score. So uh, yeah, I went over this, but here is an accuracy score or a relevancy score that, that we give out. They look at that relevancy score and then they make a determination whether or not they're gonna accept that content to be posted or reject that content. Similarly, we have another customer in VCU, which is trying to figure out, use our, our uh, platform for ad placements. So they want to run their uh, the content through Coactive and they have more subjective uh, uh, ways of uh, figuring out these tags, right? So they, they, they want to look at woman empowerment. They want to look at um, environmental costs. So these are very subjective things that they want to figure out using Coactive. So they have created some of these dynamic tags ahead of time on the platform. And now they still keep ingesting data into Coactive. And the other end, we spit out what we call is the video or, or content tag pairs. You can go look over um, and yeah, so when all of these tags are active, basically what we have done also in the background is that we have created a SQL representation of this entire content. So you can look at that SQL representation on our queries. To save time, I've run some of these queries ahead of time, but I'll quickly show you um, what is the power of SQL. Anything you can imagine run, uh, querying on this unstructured data, now you can do that over SQL. So here are some of the tables we give access to uh, our customers. So here are a bunch of dynamic tags that, that were created. This was a specifically was a dynamic tag that we have created and specifically focused on visual. There's also audio, there's also transcript tables that we, we generate. Now let's think about what is that we could do um, with, um, with SQL here. Let's say 
I want to rank what are the top two or uh, top two tags associated with each video. I can actually write a SQL for this. This is basic P SQL. There's there's nothing different about this, right? So what what we could see here is that for each of the video, the set of um, uh, keyframes that that we have created um, uh, that is leading me to believe that these are the top two tags that can be associated with that video, right? Let's say I have um, I have use cases like um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to uh, understand engagement metrics, right? So Customers can do one of the two things. They can either ingest the data as part of our metadata during ingestion, or they can export all of this data into their own uh, environments and merge with the rest of their data, and then they can do run deep analytics. In this case, we have assumed some information for um, engagement and met metrics, and here is how it would look. So I, what I'm trying to understand is that, I'll, I'll chart this to, be, to have a better view, what kind of, um, what kind of tag led me to have most impressions? Turns out vehicle shot has most number of impressions. Um, where, what, what kind of tags led, led me to have most number of clicks? Turns out action sequences. So this is another way you can use, use the platform. And finally, let's say I have more basic use case. All I want is to extract audio transcripts from my video. I can write, write a SQL for that as well. For each of the video, here is my full audio transcript. Right? So, there are multiple ways you can use SQL. Essentially, what we have done is that given you a way to query your images and videos as if they were structured SQL, right? Uh, <clears throat> we also have uh, integrations that customers um, customers uh, use us for. Um, a, a quick demo I want to show is Mimir, which is a MAM system. One of our customers had Mimir as their uh, media media asset management software where they had access to all of their media assets. So typical uh, DAMs and MAMs, the search is powered by keyword based on metadata that is created. So the problem that they were trying to solve was, how do I get more semantic searchability? So let's go look at something like um, flight taking off. So when I search for something like this, flight taking off, obviously there was no metadata created for flights taking off, so you're not able to find that content. Now, when they integrated with Coactive, here is the Coactive integration. Let's look at the results. I'm not able, uh, not even able to, I'm not alone just showing them videos where it's matching for uh, flights taking off. I'm actually showing moments where flights are actually taking off. Right? So this is just giving them the entire video asset and also telling you that within these moments in that video, you have that match. So that's 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 the power of Coactive. And typically, and 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 an integration like this will take days. One other customer that we can quote is Thomson Reuters, which has uh, the semantic search, which is powered by Coactive today. They ingest all of their digital assets into Coactive, and we power the semantic search. Now, uh, one of the questions that I get asked is. Well, I, I, I like dynamic tags, but um, from a qualitative perspective, this looks good. But how do I know from a quantitative perspective, if I, have, if I want to train my models with this data, how do I know from quantitative perspective this is good? So one of the new product launches that is coming up, we call it uh, Auto Evaluator. It generates automatic ground truth for you. So we generate the ground truth powered by LLM you just validate the ground truth, and now you can see what is the F1 score, the, the recall metrics um, for success metrics, recall metrics uh, for your specific metadata that we are creating. Now, you could also, we also give you an ability to set a threshold after which you want to cut off the metadata tag associated with Coactive. In summary, what I'm showing you here is that using Visual AI with Coactive is extremely easy. Developers love this platform because of the speed and the scale that we are able to achieve. And this is something we would love for you to give it a try. We have a booth out here. Would love to see you folks stop by and take a look. Thank you.